Good morning. So this week we're gonna do things just a little bit different. It is officially September, actually the 2nd of September, which means I'm a day behind now. What I'm behind for, uh, well, there's been one thing that's been missing from this channel for a while that's been kind of bothering me because it was part of this channel once I really got into the thick of it. Running. Yeah. I started out this year really heavy with running, stacking big miles, 50 mile weeks, just put a lot of volume in and then basically just dropped off on the running and focused on just cycling. And the cycling literally took over so much that it took over on this channel where there's now been no running. And I don't like that. I want this channel to have some running in it. Maybe it's not gonna be as much as before and not be as much as like some of the more boring stuff, but at least for the bigger adventures or the more scenic trail runs, I would definitely like to bring that back in because it was a part of the channel, it's a part of who I am and I feel like it should still be on this channel. I never had intentions of this just being a strictly cycling channel. It's always been more so for just my adventures, whatever I get into. So we'll touch more on the running later. But as far as this week goes, I'm gonna film the entire week I'm going to try to hit 20 hours of training, if not more, hopefully. And I'm just going to document the whole week and put out one big video at the end of the week. And yeah, I haven't done something like this in a while. More so because I haven't been training for racing. But back when I was doing triathlon, like I would document like a week of training. This week, I'm just going to film everything I get into. Definitely more running, cycling. Just trying to hit that 20 hours this week. There's no races lined up for this year but there might be something for next year. So we'll talk about that later in the video. And yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, yeah, you're gonna put out, you're gonna try to train 20 hours, but you're not training for racing. No, but I am training to get back into run shape and back into being able to knock out 20, 30 hour weeks. So with that said, coffee first, then we'll get into it. Uh, up in the spot like a spotlight Hit the block like a hammer chasing knots Like it'll disappear if I don't get my pot Alright, made it out to Thomas Creek Gonna run the dry pond loop Which, if I remember correctly, is like 6 miles Somewhere around there I don't remember how much vert there is This used to be like super easy for me And I'd have to run it like 2 or 3 times normally Just under a mile and a half And 500 feet of vert so far Surprisingly, my heart rate's actually doing really well. Staying in zone two, high zone two. What's not doing so well is my weak bottom half of my legs. Definitely need some more strength on the legs. And that's why, part of the reason why, time to get back out and just hit the vert hard. Definitely feeling it in the ankles and the calves. It's definitely on the warmer side. Probably should have got out earlier, but it's all good. Let me do what I be doing, Black. Made it to the top of Dry Pond. It is so windy, you probably can't hear me. Two and a half miles, 940 feet of vert. Yeah, nice thing. Mostly downhill from here. Tiny little bit of uphill back to the car. So, happy about that. I ain't playing, I be on it, I get to it black. Never stationary, bar stay in motion. They be like, hey, Sony, oh, you slick. Your middle name, lotion? Your middle name. Okay, made it down the mountain. Actually surprised how well that went. Sometimes the downhill on the quads is really hard when you haven't been training. Today was not one of those days, so happy with that. The run plan for the next four weeks looks like this. Mileage volume and hourly volume needs to go up. Vert, I need to get my vert back in. So what does that look like by the end of four weeks? By the last week, I'm back to running 50, 60 mile weeks and be able to run four to six K of vert in one run. I don't care about speed. I'm not really a fast runner. Kind of was on road, but those days are gone. I want to get back to the point where I can just wake up and be like, I'm going to go for a six mile run and I end up running 20 miles just because I can and I feel like it. I'm a long ways from there. So that's kind of the four week plan by the end of the month just to really peak and push this fitness. 
Now also it's worth noting that I'm not just throwing in crazy volume and being naive. I've done big volume for years. So I know what my body can and can't handle. I know how my body reacts when I do these certain things and I'm very conscious of what my body is feeling and telling me. It's not like I'm just getting off the couch from being 190 pounds again and just starting running, no. I have backup fitness built over years and knowledge that lets me go and do these kind of things to regain my fitness. But just a little side note, just so you realize that I'm not off my marbles and I'm not telling anybody else they should get off the couch and go be doing 50 mile weeks by the end of week four. Like, <laughs> that's not a smart move. Okay, back home from the run. Stopped and got a little lunch. Now I'm gonna recover and get ready for tomorrow. Kicking off this week real strong. Ended up with eight and a half miles and 1,700 feet of vert. It was actually six miles when I got back to the car, but my mom and my dog were out hiking, so I ran further up the mountain to go catch up with her and then hike back down. So I got a little bit extra miles and an extra vert. Um, yeah, was not expecting to have that much, but I'm not gonna complain. I actually felt really good. That was probably one of the best trail runs I've had since I started running again, which I am completely stoked on. Um, yeah, I was off for two weeks from running again and being able to just come back with eight miles and 1700 feet of vert makes me feel a lot better. Like I am actually gonna be on track. It's just gonna be a big fatigue load on the legs and the body this week and just gonna have to push through it. Okay, recover, see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning from beautiful Mount Rose Highway. It is Tuesday and that means it's long ride day. Instead of going far today, we're gonna go high today. That's right, headed up to the top of Mount Rose. Let's get it. Super windy. I don't know if you can hear me. Made it to the top of Mount Rose Highway. I had to put my jacket on. It's freaking chilly up here. So far, 22 miles in, 4,600 feet climbed. It's a big day of climbing. Tuesdays are normally my long ride days. I normally do an outback to Genoa, which is usually about 100 miles. I did not feel like going out to Genoa today, so instead, replacing distance with climbing, which should, in theory, get me about the same amount of time in the saddle as uh, riding 100 miles. And that's really what I care about, is time in the saddle. Like, distance is cool and all, but I like knowing that I can ride long hours in the saddle, regardless of the speed and distance. I woke up feeling pretty good today after that big old trail run yesterday, which ended up being a little bit longer and a little bit more overt than I expected. So figured why not do some big climbing. So the plan now is to actually drop down the backside, which I will not film because I'm trying to teach myself how to make things short and being that this is a full week of training, I need these to be shorter. So I'm gonna go back down that side, come back up, and then I will film some of the descent so you get to see that as well. Made it back to the top, 38 miles and 7,000 feet. Now for another killer descent and no more climbing. Time to go get some calories. You, you.
Hey you. Hey you. Oh, little girl. Well, that was supposed to be a long ride Tuesday. However, it ended up being a little short. I was at like four hours 52. Normally it should have been like five, six hours, but I did get 7,000 feet of climbing. So, hey, it is what it is. Not gonna complain with when I got 7,000 feet of climbing. So, gonna get some big calories back in. But yeah, this is typically how my week goes. Monday's normally kind of off which yesterday you saw I ran. So sometimes I end up taking like a Sunday off instead of a Monday. So yesterday, normally Mondays are easier or off and then Tuesdays are always long ride days. And then Wednesday is usually spicy again. But yeah, that was super solid. I was like, I knew I did a big trail run yesterday so I wasn't sure how the body was gonna be feeling today and it felt good enough. So I was like, all right, let's go up rows and got up rows, I'm like, you know what, I got just enough juice so I could probably get down the backside and back up again, and that's what I did, which is cool, because I literally have not been up rows once this season, so that was good to go and do that. Good old Tuesday done, dusted, all right. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Got a new part for the bike, gonna put that on. The struggle bus is real today. Yeah, so this morning just woke up on the tired side. The body actually feels pretty good for being how hard I went for the last two days. And I slept nine hours, like, got some solid sleep and solid recovery on that end, just tired. Wednesdays can be hit or miss, being that normally Tuesdays are that long ride, so it can be hit or miss how I'm feeling. Wednesdays is all about, well, how much more can your body take? So Tuesday is usually like a long endurance day and then Wednesday I try to throw in a run and throw in a group ride, which more times than not turns out to be spicy. So it's kind of like going from a super long endurance day straight into like some really punchy efforts type things. Like I'll go out and trail run and add some elevation in, so hill reps. And then I'll come home, try to recover, and then go to a group ride later in the day. The group ride typically ends up being like threshold, sometimes VO2 max, like a really hard effort. So like I use Wednesday as a, we're gonna push as hard as we can with as much fatigue. That's just how it's been trying to get back into like some good shape is I just been kind of in a sense over training just to boost and eke out any kind of fitness that I can. We're back into these 20, 20 hour weeks of training, there's definitely a lot more fatigue, a lot more tiredness, and you just gotta push through that as well. Training the body to actually perform with that fatigue, with that tiredness, just like I would in triathlon training. That's why I do some of these double days where it's run and bike. I just, it helps eke out that much more fitness. Okay gonna get this swapped out. No, I'm not gonna show you because at some point there will be a review on this. Well, the trailhead I wanted to go to, I could not get to thanks to good old road construction. They had the whole road both ways to the trailhead completely closed off. So after driving around for 20 plus minutes, I ended up having to go somewhere else, which is not too far from where I wanted to go. That place has the, the hill that I like to do hill reps on. So I can actually see that hill from here, but I don't want to attack on that much more mileage. So came over here instead. There's a nice little loop over here. There's a steeper hill rep spot I have which I might do a couple laps on. It's short, but it's extremely punchy. It's warming up quick, whatever, had a pivot, still getting it in. One mile in, 300 feet of gain. Made it over to my little hill rep here. First section of this is good and runnable, and then it flattens for a section here, like kind of downhill, and then it gets super punchy. This is probably better for working on your speed hike and technique, but I try to just 
run it super slow slow jog up it just because it's steep just to get those different muscles working it'll get the heart rate up real high so i just try to move up it at a steady pace so we're gonna run this side a couple times and then there's a back side i haven't done so we'll do the front a couple times and the back a couple times Okay, this one's a little more interesting. Like I said, I've never done the backside. So, cool thing is you get to the top of that last hill and then it's like a mellow kind of steady down for a little bit, which is good to get your cadence going again after a climb. And then it just drops, drops straight down into like this 30% or 20 something. Good climb back up and then it'll steady off again. Okay, just under four miles, 900 feet of vert. So when I go out and run trail, my minimum usually is at least a thousand feet of vert. At least hitting a thousand feet keeps you in that sweet spot of always keeping and maintaining your vert ability, but also, I don't know, just after you get enough in and you can do enough, it's just kind of the standard really. 1,000, 2K, you should be able to run that. At least I feel like I should be able to run that any day, every day. Let me get down this hill and we'll chat a little more. Okay, hill reps are done. Just gotta work my way around this little mountain and then I'll be back at the car. Ended up with two laps basically, two times up each side. The reason why I do those kind of little hill reps is just that's how I build the strength in my legs. Run more and more vert, just training the legs and strengthening the legs. The ground is so uneven as well that with all the technical aspect to it, get a little bit more strengthening. And the reason why I try to jog up them instead of speed hike or walk up them is because A, it helps me kind of just dial in that form and then B, keeps my heart rate in a higher zone. And the reason why I like to do that and keep my heart rate in the higher zone is so that way I'm constantly pushing the ceiling. So that way I'm able to just hold a higher heart rate for longer periods so it puts my heart rate more into that zone three threshold sometimes vo2 so the more that i can hold that up those kind of inclines the better i am when i have to go and race or do anything hard where my heart rate's going to spike like that should end up with about five miles after i finish back to the car thousand feet of vert which is good nothing crazy pretty mellow and then head home try to get a meal in do a little video editing hopefully there's a group ride tonight there's a fire across town so i'm hoping the group ride is still on tonight but try to take it easy before the group ride and then go hit that well it's super windy so i'm sure you can't hear me headed over to the wheelman group ride happens every wednesdays got zero recovery or relaxation in <laughs> All good. Shout out to my buddy Eric. He hit me up. Was like, "Hey, talk to Trek. They got a couple new bikes in over at Trek Reno. You want to go check out some new gravel bikes and make a video?" Hell yeah! Went and checked out the new Checkmate Checkpoint and made a little video. Always down for the content. So basically, running on empty today. Haven't really had much fuel, food, but it's all good. We're gonna get these miles. Let's go. It's Thursday and well, kind of spent the whole day editing videos. So the day kind of got away from me. It is now four o'clock and just getting out for a ride. Just gonna make this an active recovery day now. 
So we're gonna go out, spin the legs for about an hour and call it. Thursdays always seem to be hit or miss. Sometimes I have a lot of energy and feeling good, which then means, you know, I will keep pushing on and training hard. Other times I'm kind of feeling run down come Thursday and try to do a little active recovery and then pick it back up on a Friday. Out noodle in the ditch. Not sure if you could tell or not, but it is super smoky today. That fire over there is uh, not doing us any favors, unfortunately. And you know the day got away from you when? Yeah, I was not even feeling like putting my gravel tires on. I just went straight out with the 2.2 roadies and said, screw it, that's good enough. They will be fine in the ditch. And they're actually doing really well. However, should have let some air out. I was trying to get a little time in. Yeah, that was like super noodle spin, but active recovery, 100%. Got a little over an hour, so that's cool. It's like 110, not very much, like 16 miles or something like that. I don't think I recapped off how yesterday went. Yesterday was a solid day, kind of a crazy day. The run went pretty well. The legs felt a little fatigued on the downhills, but other than that, they were all right. I got that thousand feet of vert, so I was pretty happy with that. I didn't get to really recover or actually eat before going out for the group ride, so probably was definitely a little under fueled and hydrated for the group ride because I ended up going and filming um, another video about a couple of Trek bikes, which is already out. And then after I filmed that, I literally had time to get home, get a, get a plate of fries in me, and, and that was it. So uh, the group ride went really well last night. I was super happy with it. There was enough people that there was more than just a super fast group. So I ended up riding with a couple guys that were definitely more in my power profile. So we definitely put in a good dig, but it wasn't like seriously overkill but it was still like some good vo2 max there was some good threshold in there there was a good little bit of everything so it was really solid and then i was just completely wiped out after that and then plan for today i was gonna go bike packing honestly i got some new bags and stuff and i was gonna go bike packing and then because I filmed that video yesterday i sat down to work on that this morning and that just ended up taking the whole day and then it was just like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to get out of here and go do this. So saving that for another time, but I got a video done. So that's cool. Um, probably worked out best after that ride. I can tell my body's just a little bit on the tired side. So active recovery today was probably spot on what it wanted. And then we'll just pick it back up tomorrow and hit it hard again and just try to full send for the next three days and get that 20 hours. Okay. That is Thursday. See you. Come on. After a nice little recovery kind of day, that bike ride and nine hours of sleep, feeling pretty fresh today. Today's gonna be a run day. I'm over here right off of the side of Mount Rose Highway and I'm gonna run up to Church's Pond today. It's pretty dang steep. <laughs> Should be somewhere between two and three K avert. And as soon as you leave the parking lot, it's just straight up. Pretty steep switchbacks and stuff for a little while. Get this big trail run in, get some vert in. I'm at 11 hours so far this week. Got nine more hours over the next three days to hit that 20. Hopefully this run doesn't crush me too much. I figure I'll get up the road a little bit and we'll kind of talk about bringing the running back in, what's the plan for running, potential races, things like that. Okay, almost to the first super steep section. You do not want to see me try to talk and jog up this. Just under two miles, hit a thousand feet of vert. Definitely on the suffer train. Big jump up for the trail running, being that I haven't been 
doing much of this bigger stuff. Even when I was in peak run shape and doing this, this one's always been challenging for me. It's just short, punchy, steep. So yeah, this is a good kick in the butt though. And more so being a higher elevation. I think we start somewhere in the five, close to 6,000 feet of elevation and just keep working our way up. Rushing blood, followed commands from up above. Can you feel the weight of it pressing down? Like the millionth mile Gotta suffer for something now, everyone. A little over three miles, just hit 2,000 feet of elevation gain. No front in here. There definitely was a little bit of hiking, walking. I'm out of shape for this kind of stuff, and it's steep. I'm feeling a little spunky today. Instead of going to the actual pond, which is literally not much further up, maybe a mile or so, I've been wanting to do this this little extension over here. I've been seeing it, a few people I follow on Strava doing it. I've been eyeballing it for over a year and I finally figured out how to get to the trail. So it's gonna be a spicy one. I'm sure the GoPro does no justice, but we're gonna scramble that peak right there. Oh boy, I'm excited. It's on the best they can. Well, currently a lot of this is not runnable for where my fitness is at, but the heart rate is really high. So that kind of equals out to acting like running. Shout out to anybody that runs this right now. I can't wait to get back to that point. Currently four miles in and 2,900 feet. I just got to my kind of playground. Open, exposed, rocky, pick your line, scramble. Oh, this is the good stuff. You ready for it? We're just gonna scatter all the way up. Oh, I am so excited for this part. That's gonna burn, but it's gonna be good. Can't see, but there's a sick plateau right here. And then the pond's down there. Okay, here we go. Let's clean the bed with heavy there she is, last peak to the top. That's Mount Rose over there. Yes. Oh God, I love this. This, I forgot how much I love this. Pick a peak, make your own line, and get to the top. Oh my God, so good. Save that bitch only for the ones with less of a sense of the spiritual. Made it, made it to the summit. Okay, this looks like the highest point, this rock. Made it to the summit. Yo, okay. 4.44 miles and 3,200 feet of elevation gain. Oh my God. I was not planning on this today, but this is, send it hard on a Thursday. I definitely got a lot of work, a lot of work to do to get back in mountain shape. The legs actually feel pretty good. I just can't move fast. Heart rate's high. I'm still not quite acclimated to elevation or this high. I have more weight than I normally have previous when I was doing mountain stuff. I was weighing a lot less. Oh my God, check out the views. I am so sorry it's smoky today, but it's still kind of good. So, Mount Rose, the actual Mount Rose. Mount Rose Ski Resort. That's Washoe Lake down there. Wash your mouth, boy, as my aunt would say. Uh, we have Geiger, Geiger's out there. And then you got downtown there.
And if I was in shape, I would have said F it. And I would have sent it for Mount Rose from here because that just looks too much fun. Time for a little snack. Let's talk about running the channel, all that fun stuff. So yeah, let's go back to the channel first off. I started this channel, we're pretty close to at least three years now. It's sometime this month in September. So the channel originally started when I was getting out of gravel. I was training for gravel racing, riding gravel, did some racing, um, and was just kind of on the tail end of it. So that's kind of where this channel started was with that. Long story short, got out of gravel because of I moved from Idaho from prime gravel down to Reno where I did not understand what this was out here because it was because it's basically mountain bike stuff. Plus having a bike that just always caused issues, la la la. Got out of gravel, then transitioned into training for triathlon and started racing triathlon. So the channel then shifted into that. Went really hard training racing triathlon did fairly decent it kind of involved into trail running getting out in the mountains more big hikes things like that and then full circle we kind of transitioned back into gravel training for gravel raced one race and did a lot of running in the beginning of the year so with that said we are now back to the point where this channel has come full circle it is back to gravel bikes, riding gravel, bikes in general, that kind of thing, um, kind of deviated away from the training stuff. This channel's got monetized, it's got new followers, there's a lot of things going on. But the thing that I feel like that is missing from this channel that should have never left from this channel is the running. That's gonna probably rub some people the wrong way, but it was here, you know, kind of at the beginning and the stages, and I still want it here because I still love running, I love, everything about that sport as well that is what i do i run and i ride so with that said i went really hard this year on running at the beginning of the year did one race with some friends early in the year a trail race i basically knocked out like 500 miles of running within like the first like three or four months probably the first three months of the year and then i just completely let it, let it drop off like it just fell off i got a new gravel bike i got hardcore back into cycling and just quit running as much as I love cycling, it just always felt like there was something missing and missing creatively was filming, running and doing that kind of thing. But now I wanna bring it back. I wanna bring it back to the channel. Just wanna bring it back in my life. And that is kind of what I'm doing. That is, that is what the shift is gonna be. I don't have any races planned, but I do wanna run a 50K next year. I have gotten to the point several times where I could have run a 50K and I just have not done it. And I'm really kicking myself because I was in that shape at the beginning of the year. And I should have just signed up for a 50K and went and did it. And I am kicking myself because the year is almost over and I have not done that. And now it's like, well, the way it's taken me to get back to just this point, there's no way I'm doing a 50K probably this year. So the plan is to get back into shape and then try to hit a 50K maybe early in the year. I don't have a race figured out it will definitely obviously be a trail i just don't know which one yet brownie so that's kind of the full circle that's what is going on that's why i'm going out and doing big elevation and things i'm just trying to get the vert up the vert volume up and then get the just mileage volume up beginning of the year i could go out the door and just run 20 miles like it was nothing and then recover and do something big the next day I don't even know if I can run 20 miles right now. I don't even know if I can run 13. Like it's, it's that bad. So that's kind of like this whole week of like just stacking a big volume week and kind of just right at that point of overtraining almost. I just want to get back into running shape and then just find that sweet balance between cycling and running. Previously, the content around running was triathlon like i said and training and training for that kind of racing and then kind of went into like some different trail runs and things like that i think bringing it back in is just going to be more a video or two a week big trail ventures or big trail runs a new trail route or something like that it's not going to be like oh i'm going to go run 2800s on a track and you're that's all you're going to see no i want it to be more of this what you're seeing today, like the big trail, the big adventure. Oh, look at that peak. I'm gonna go scramble that peak, that kind of thing. I don't know. That's my thoughts, that's my feelings. I know this is a ramble on. 
I just finally have gotten this channel after three years. I've gotten this channel to like, I'm monetized. I have people leaving comments. I have people, you know, following. And the original people that were here the whole time, some runners that are missing out on that point. And maybe there's a lot of cyclists that are gonna be like super bummed that I'm bringing running in. But I can't keep going forward with this channel feeling like creatively I'm missing something and feeling like the channel is missing something. That's all. Drop a comment, let me know you guys' thoughts. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I started this channel to record and document my adventures, my growth in sport, and just the different sports I've gotten into and the different things I've done and the progression and the things that I have. And not documenting my running, while it is a huge part of me athletically and me as a person, like I dropped off the running, but the running's back now. So for me, that means I wanna bring it back not only just physically in my life, but back to this channel to document again. Sorry, long rant over. That's all I got to say. More running content coming soon. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. There will be plenty of bike stuff to watch. If you like the running, cool, even better. Drop some comments what you'd like to see from the running. There'll probably be a series at some point of training for this 50K this elusive 50k that I'll figure out at some point. I'll keep you guys updated. That's Friday. I'm going to end it here because I'm going to scramble down this mountain and I need both hands so I do not lose my face or anything else. See you tomorrow, Saturday. It's Saturday. Finally made it to the weekend. That run yesterday went really good, but the downhill absolutely crushed my quads no issues with the up and the 3,000 feet of vert but the downhill after i got off that big peak and then back to the trail it was all downhill to the car and it was just a constant pounding my legs are definitely not that strong yet so they are definitely sore today the plan for this morning is three hours endurance on the bike try to keep the climbing at a minimum try to keep the efforts at a minimum just try to keep it in that zone two real relative easy just to knock out three hours hopefully get the legs back to being good literally i'll have to just do the same thing tomorrow and then that should be my hours for the week because we climb for the view basically did this whole video this whole week and the only day I really trained with anybody was the group ride yeah I didn't even realize like how solo this week was but super pumped to have some company today I'm gonna make that a uh, three hours I need real easy Okay, yeah, uh, officially, 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 there's something wrong with me. Can I uh, replay what I said this morning on the other camera? Try to keep the climbing at a minimum. Hold please, currently 30 miles in and 2,500 feet climbed. Do, uh, do you call that avoid climbing? And it doesn't help I have power legs over here with the most easiest climbing gear. So he just scoots on by and I'm like, 2.2s, <gasps> 300 watts. I'm coming. I'm just gonna be dead tomorrow and next week, but it's okay. We're gonna hit our 20 hours this week and that's all that matters. I'm gonna have some super awesome vert in this week, so that's killer. Time for a snack, finish off this ride, and go eat something stupid big, because I am hungry. I'm a hungry boar. I'm a hungry boy. Boar. Yeah, hungry boar. I'm a hungry boy. I've been burning minimum of 3,100 calories all week. I think I've had a 4,000 calorie day or two so uh calories in 
is important and sleep is important. Super happy to have some company. All right, I'm doing my best to keep these short. It's not a road ride unless you hike a bike? <laughs> well, <laughs> when it's, I don't know, dude. Okay, super solid ride. I've got to give a massive shout out to Calvin for coming through and riding with me for those couple hours. His links are below for his Strava and Instagram. Dude, massive shout out to him for coming out. It was feeling like a struggle bus this morning, but I hit him up, I was like, hey man, I got three hours on deck, road ride. You wanna come out and ride? He was like, hell yeah. So he met up with me. Let me tell you, sometimes just having somebody to ride with, especially at the tail end of a really hard week or a long week, man, huge difference. That was a blast. I much needed that and then kind of gave me an excuse to throw in a couple dirt sections and stuff like that because he's on his gravel bike but with gravel tires. So ended up with 53 miles, 3,400 feet of climbing, three hours and 20 minutes. So 20 minutes over, spot on. Totally through the hole. I'm not gonna do a bunch of climbing, try to avoid climbing thing out the door real quick did quite a bit of climbing, so absolutely smoked. My legs are smoked, I'm tired. And my body is definitely tired, more so from that big trail run yesterday. So definitely gonna get some big calories in, try to recover, and then I should only need like three hours, less than three hours tomorrow to hit that 20. If you made it to the end, thank you. I appreciate that. I know this was super long. I did everything in my power, try to make it short, try to make the days shorter. I am very terrible at making short videos. Everything seems to be in that 15 minutes to 20 minutes range. I don't know what it is. I just, I even try to film less and it still ends up being super long. So if you made it this far, thank you. Sunday, done and dusted. 20 hour week, done and dusted. Let's chat about a couple things. Uh, one, why was there not a whole lot of gravel riding? It seemed to be mostly road. So at the starting of this week, I think it was, or last weekend, um, there was a fire over off of Bear Valley, which is our kind of gravel area by Truckee. That basically stopped me from wanting to go ride or try to ride over there because of a wildfire. So there was nowhere really to ride gravel unless I wanted to go back to the sandbox or try to find something new. It was just gonna be too much work. On top of that, we just had another huge fire, which you just saw at the end of. Um, so there was basically two fires happening. One just finished and another one started closer in town. The fire that you just saw ended up starting later on Saturday. So Sunday, I wasn't even sure I was gonna be able to get out. But Sunday ended up with a one hour run and then ended up with a two hour bike. So that finished off the 20 hour spot on. Fire season makes things hard. So yeah, so that's why I wasn't able to ride it in gravel and why you saw so much road, unfortunately. Let's run through the stats. 
did end up with 20 hours, actually 20 hours and 15 minutes for the week between cycling and running. So we nailed that. Running wise, I hit 30 miles with six hours and 20 minutes and 6,149 feet of elevation gain. That was a pretty decent jump. My last kind of peak before I took like a, almost two weeks off was 22 miles and 1,500 feet. So I really kind of pushed the elevation gain and then just kind of slowly pushed the distance. I started running again about seven weeks ago had one full week off and a partial run week. So to hit 30 miles this week and 6,000 feet of vert, I'm really happy with that. Happy how well that went, how well the body took it. Like there was a couple runs where I started feeling like my old run self where like, I just feel like I can keep going. The big run that I did, I think, which was Thursday or Friday, I can't remember now. That big run was definitely pushing things. I was very happy with the elevation gain. It was started out at 6,000 feet of elevation, went all the way up to 9,000 feet and hit basically 3,000 feet of elevation within four miles. That was fine. My body took that no problem. So that was like a huge marker being like, okay, my body's getting back to where it used to be. The four miles downhill with negative 3,000 feet just crushed my quads. If I was to take that out of the equation, I would have finished off this week almost fresh like with some fatigue but like body feeling good feeling like i could have done more that negative 3000 quad crushing definitely played a factor into the weekend i definitely started getting some doms saturday night really the quads started aching a lot almost couldn't walk i wasn't sure how sunday was going to go the run on Sunday started a little rough, but once I got into the rhythm, it was like, okay, cool. But my quads are still pretty sore. So I know I'm at a point right now where I can run 3K elevation, probably could push it to four or 5,000. It's just I gotta build a little bit more strength for the downhill because that's where it's gonna take me out. Cycling stats were spot on this week. 203 miles with 13,900 feet of elevation gain. I think that is the sweet spot for like bringing back running and doing running and cycling. If I can hit 200 miles on the bike, 50 miles running, if I could balance out that every week, that seems to be like spot on. Being that I got 200 miles this week on the bike, 13 hours of cycling with almost 14K of gain, pumped on that. Um, all in all, 20 hours done and dusted, super happy that I actually hit that 20 super happy how the body feels and how it took all that training. I definitely feel like I'm gonna get some fitness boost from that. Do I need to hit 20 hours every week? No, I'm not racing so there's really no point, but I wanted to do that because I'm just trying to get back into good shape and by pushing the ceiling a little bit more, it just helps eke things out and kind of sets me up for some bigger adventures that are coming up. There's definitely gonna be more running content coming. Cycling content's not going nowhere. It's just gonna be a kind of a mix of both. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Sorry it was so long. Sorry that all these videos are so long. Maybe someday I'll figure out how to make a, a video that's only eight minutes and hits all the sweet spots, but it's a work in progress. If you guys have any questions about my training week and hitting that 20 hours or anything else, drop that comment below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.